Doctors here have seen about a 40% drop in asthma attacks triggered by respiratory tract infections like cough and runny nose in recent months. It's partially thanks to measures like mask wearing and hand washing as well as safe distancing, which have reduced cold and flu transmission. But experts warn against complacency. As asthma symptoms could be similar to that for COVID-19, they say that some asthma patients may be hesitant to seek medical help during this period to avoid being subjected to pandemic restrictions and investigations. Such symptoms include coughs, breathlessness and chest discomfort. Doctors also expressed concern that some may prefer to self-medicate with the blue inhaler, which only gives short-term relief instead of treating the inflammation. And doing that, they say, could result in life-threatening asthma attacks in the longer term. Well, in line with World Asthma Day, which is today, we're joined by respiratory specialist Dr. Adrian Chan, who's president of the Asthma and Allergy Association of Singapore. Dr. Chan, welcome and thanks for joining us tonight. It's been more than a year since COVID-19 hit us. What's your observation been on how the pandemic has impacted asthma patients and their concerns? Yes, so with the restrictions on COVID-19 transmission, such as and with measures such as uh, uh, safe distancing and mask wearing, it has obviously reduced the risk of transmission. It has also helped to reduce the risk of transmission of common respiratory infections, such as the common cold and, and flu. And with that, we have seen that asthma attacks that previously were attributed to co these uh, common infections have reduced as well. So there have been unexpected benefits. But again, we have to be careful about prematurely reducing or stopping the, uh, the asthma controller medications that were previously prescribed by the healthcare professionals. And the reason is because asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airways. And the asthma controller medications contain small amounts of anti-inflammatory medications that sort of help to suppress the airway inflammation. And in doing so, it will help to reduce the risk of symptoms as well as asthma attacks. Now, this is important because in this day and age, it's not wise to develop any respiratory symptoms. And in fact, we have also had patients coming forward expressing concerns that when they have asthma symptoms, perhaps they would not want to seek uh, appropriate or early medical treatment because what happens is that they perhaps may be subjected to more extensive investigations, more extensive uh, treatment, which would otherwise impact upon their daily activities and also their health outcomes. So I would caution against um, you know, reducing the, the asthma controller medications on their own. Rather than reducing it, I would advise them to adopt a strategy whereby they should actually maintain their controller medication so that they would not even develop any symptoms in the first place. And of course, they should not be overusing their their reliever medication, which is what we term as the blue inhaler. And the reason is because the blue inhaler essentially just treats, uh, just treats the, op the airways, the narrowed airways, without really treating the inflamed airways. Therefore, they don't really treat the underlying problem and potentially don't address the, the, the real problem with asthma. Dr. Chan, how can we tell the difference between an asthma flare-up and COVID-19 since symptoms can be quite similar or sound quite similar. Yes, indeed. In fact, in, even for healthcare professionals, it's not that straightforward to differentiate between uh, asthma symptoms and COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, both may have some diff both may present with cough, with breathlessness, with uh, some chest discomfort and perhaps even wheezing. But I think the healthcare professional will try to pick up in terms of how, how recent the symptoms occurred. Uh, were there other symptoms? Because for example, like COVID-19 may have other symptoms such as loss of taste and loss of smell, which is more class classically associated with COVID-19 infections. Uh, in addition, perhaps like viral infections, they may also have symptoms such as uh, body aches uh, and tiredness, which sometimes may not be seen in asthma, asthma itself specifically. 
Dr. Chan, it's World Asthma Day today, and part of, of that is to uncover misconceptions about this condition. What are some of those misconceptions that you've seen, and what needs to be changed? Yes. So, in fact, this year, well, uh, the Global Initiative for Asthma, otherwise known as GINA, has come up with a team to address asthma uh, misconceptions. So, some asthma misconceptions that needs to be addressed include uh, that asthma only occurs in the young and that adult asthmatics will sooner or later outgrow their asthma. That's not really true because asthma can actually occur at any age. Um, another common misconception is that if I have asthma, I can't exercise. Again, the good news is that if with effective control of the asthma, actually most asthmatics can lead a normal lifestyle and in fact, an active, healthy lifestyle. All right, Ray, thanks for your thoughts this evening. Dr. Adrian Chan, President of the Asthma and Allergy Association, Singapore.